When Gold Dingo EX was first revealed, many players hyped this up as the big card of Paradox Rift. And it has a, a great ability and an even better attack. And I think there is a lot of potential for Goldengo EX. Now, at the time of this recording, Goldengo hasn't quite hit the heights that we would have expected. It has been doing okay to not so great in online tournaments. It kind of struck out at LAIC. But I think there's still a lot of potential in Goldengo EX, and maybe we're, we just haven't found the right combination of cards. But today, I have got a, I've got a build of Goldengo EX, maybe a little different from what you've seen so far. Inspired by another creator, if you've seen Azul's video, uh, then you have an idea of where this is going, but I made some tweaks there as well. So uh, something a little different for Goldengo EX that maybe pushes it to the next level. I'm Jeff from InThirdPerson.com. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and yeah, let's talk about Goldengo EX. Before we get into this video, quickly wanted to let you know that I am fundraising for Extra Life. 100% of the proceeds go towards the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals, a network of hospitals taking care of thousands of kids every day. It's an absolutely wonderful cause. Thank you to everybody who has donated so far. So far, we've raised over a thousand dollars, which is phenomenal. You still have time to yeah, right? <laughs> shout out to the Shonen 17. Thank you for the follow. I'm not actually live right now, but thank you for the follow, no less. Um, still have time to make a donation. Link is in the description of this video. And you still have an opportunity to get some sweet rewards, including a signed Pokemon card for me, as well as four by six prints of my spray paint art here. So in case you're interested in getting rewarded and supporting a wonderful cause, link in the description of this video. Thank you so much for your time and your consideration. And now let's get back to it. It is a stage one EX metal type, and we haven't had many good metal attackers for a while. So Goldengo is a nice add to the mix, especially since it hits stuff like Chen Pao for weakness. Uh, it evolves from Gimme Ghoul 260 HP, which is about standard for a stage one EX. It has the ability coin bonus where it can draw a card, or if Goldengo is in the active, you can draw two cards. Really nice draw engine there, and you're you're really going to need it because the attack make it rain for only one metal energy uh you discard basic basic energies any type of energy and you do 50 damage for each energy you discard so theoretically you could one shot anything in the game and that makes this card really tantalizing especially since we have so much energy search and energy recovery of which we put a ton of in this deck. Let's go and look at the lineups here. We've got a 4-4 line of Gimme Ghoul and Gold Dango. Now I have two Gimme Ghouls and two Gold Dango. So we've got the two Gimme Ghouls that have the 70 HP trying to get away from the Sableye shots. And yes, we have uh, Jirachi in the deck as well. Um, however, uh, just in case you still got the 70 HP. I like the 50 HP one a lot more. It's got a call for family. If you're going second, you can bench an extra Pokemon. Uh, and that's pretty nice as well, but the 50 HP makes it a, a mathematical nightmare for stuff like Sableye. So I've got a 2-2 split. Some people I've seen play only four of these ones. Some people play four of the 70 HP, but I hate the fact that this one has two retreat. So there's no easy retreat after that. You have to commit to Goldengo at the beginning of the game, which I kind of don't like from time to time, if especially if I want to attack with Scissor first. Uh, but that's the mix right now. Go, go with whatever mix of gimme ghouls you like. We've got four copies of Goldengo. Uh, we've got a 1-1 one, one Scissor line, and Scissor is amazing in this deck. It is our single prize attacker. The Punishing Scissors attack does 10 damage plus 50 damage for each ability your opponent has in play. So this can do upwards of 300 damage on a single prizer, and abilities are so prevalent in the Pokemon TCG right now that this is going to do a ton of damage and potentially uptrade against Pokemon V, Pokemon EX, V Maxes even, uh, which is awesome. We do have one copy of Mew, but that mysterious tail ability lets us search our, our deck for a item card. You know, top six cards, grab an item we find, can help us set up, find those battle VIP passes at the beginning of the game. One copy of Manaphy and one copy of Jirachi to protect the bench. Manaphy protect protects against damage, and Jirachi prevents against damage counters. Uh, we've got one Greninja, get energy into the discard pile, draw more cards, and yeah, those are that's our Pokemon 
lineup here for trainer cards we've got four ultra balls discard two, grab any pokemon of our choice four copies of earthen vessel i love having earthen vessel in this deck you discard a card get two energy and we we max out on earthen vessel because we want to have the energy in hand when gold dango is ready to do its massive ko now, in the mid to late game, when we've got a bunch of energy in the discard pile, we have four copies of superior energy retrieval. You discard two cards, draw four, or we've got energy retrieval. Just let us draw two. Um, so lots of ways to get energy from the discard pile back into our hand. And then we also run two copies of Super Rod, which we can use it to get Pokemon back, especially the Scyther line or the Scissor line. But we're mostly going to be using this for energy so that we can throw that back into the deck and redraw it if we you know we we can't efficiently get it back with whatever recovery options we have in hand we do have one copy of counter catcher for gusting a incredibly powerful card lets us grab a pokemon off our opponent's bench bring it into the active uh and not as a supporter so we can still play stuff like a iona or a professor's research we don't have research in this deck but uh lets us play a supporter on top of gusting as well which is insane one copy of lost vacuum we want to make sure that we don't have a uh, path to the peak in play because that absolutely stifles us so we do have one copy of lost vacuum here some other builds of gold dango you may have seen like triple worker we don't have the worker in the avery package here we're playing it a little differently we still have three artisans to help get our bench set up and so maybe you just go with a fourth stadium or you find something else i really like lost vacuum here because this can also take out tools four copies of battle vip pass to get our basics down on the first turn Two Iono for hand disruption. Um, four cop. We talked about that. Super rod. Nest balls. Get our basics down. And the big, big adjustment here. Uh, something that I really liked from Azul's deck is the Colrus's experiment. This lets you look at the top five cards of your deck, keep three, throw two in the lost zone. And I find that, yeah, the, the, the worker and the Avery, they just let you see three cards and you're stuck with what you're stuck with. Um, and yeah, you do have the benefit of possibly shortening the bench or bumping a stadium. And those are nice too. But I feel like this deck just really needs to grab cards. And Colrus lets you look at the best five and you get to throw two in the lost zone. And most of the time you don't care about what two you're throwing in the lost zone. So I, I much prefer the Colrus build at this point in time. We do have two copies of Bus for Gusting as well. And we've got 12 Metal Energy. So the general game plan, you want to set up wide, get some gimme ghouls down and your one Scyther using Mew to set up. And then on turn two, we're attacking with either Scissor or Gold Dango, whatever need be. You're ideally wanting to take out single price attackers or up trade on ability heavy decks with the Scissor. And then Gold Dango is in there to swing for the massive one hit KOs. All right, let's get to these matches. Any plans for future regionals? Um... I competed at Toronto Originals a couple weeks ago. Uh, no, not really. No, I that was the first time I've I've played in any sort of IRL event. I did have a good time. I did have a good time for sure. Um, Toad Scroll. Oh no. Uh, yeah, this sucks. Uh, this matchup absolutely sucks for us. They have the Toad Scroll tech. And that stops us from being able to recover cards from our discard pile. Uh, we're going to have to hold on to this boss. Uh, geez. And of course, we started the 70 HP Gimme Ghoul. I think I need to rework this list. Okay. Oh, wow. They bricked four times. All right. And this is still what the garbage we started with. <laughs> okay. Let's go and grab a Greninja and a do we grab another gimme ghoul maybe yeah let's go grab that one let's go and get some energy down i'm not gonna give them the artisan uh let's go and grab a a third gimme ghoul here and we will, oh man, we need more energy. We need more energy. Okay. And we'll wait. Yeah, whatever it is, we have to deal with the Toad Scroll. 
that shuts off our abilities and we have to knock that out like instantly now we know they have one and if they play rod then we could be in trouble so we're gonna have to keep our gusting options open to us but yeah regionals um i'm not not chomping at the bit to compete at regionals or like any sort of irl events at this point in time oh no oh no Okay, please don't hit like an Iono right now. Arvin? Okay, Arvin's fine. Arvin's fine. I think we have to play it straight up until we, we can't play it straight up. Played Rishi Mahjong. Okay, how do you play Rishi Mahjong? Yeah, evolving up and getting the Torterra. Yeah, this is, this is insane. Uh, we should have put down a... Oh, the Scyther... The Scyther is actually not good in this matchup either because the Scyther needs abilities on the board and they just don't have abilities. It's kind of like poker. Okay. That's cool. I've never had any interest in learning how to play Mahjong. Is there, is there a world where we can get enough energy and gust up a Grottle and, and KO that. That would probably be the play, right? Let's go and coin bonus for two. Super Rod, Artisan. I don't like that. Uh, let's go and get rid of Battle VIP Pass and Manaphy. And let's go grab another Goldingo. And, and draw for one. Okay, we get Unenergy. Um... That'll get us to... How much do we want to gamble here? Yeah, I think we're going to conceal cards. Draw two more. Oh, no. That was a bad gamble. That was a bad gamble. Okay, let's call Riss. And hopefully we get the scissor. We get an earthen vessel. Let's get two earthen vessels here. That's actually pretty great. Okay. The scyther is... Uh, depending on... Okay, I'm going to bench the scyther just in case. Uh, let's get rid of one of the artisans. We don't need it. And let's grab some energy here. And they are not going to one-shot us here, are they? I think we can just take the 100. Yeah. Would have been nice to knock out one of the grottles. Unfortunately, not going to happen here. We do get a Goldango out of the discard. That's good. And I think this caps out at like 190. Oh, that damn Luxray. It's still... They have to two... They, I don't think they can one-shot anything. Okay. Oh, yep. Yeah, here comes the Toad School. This we're going to have to knock out like immediately. if we want to play the game. Now, uh, this does put us in a little bit of a jam in the sense that, yeah, they've got like some really beefy attackers coming up. They have no draw engine though, and that may work to our advantage unless they play like a, a Iono here, which would be absolutely tragic. Nope, they don't have it. They don't have it. Okay. So if they don't got it like that, then I will get rid of this. Uh, we don't need the Mew. We don't need the Mew. Let's go and grab two more energy. And we are going to knock down this Toad School. And I don't need any energy right now. We've got four there. Yeah, let's just go and... Oh, we'll draw some cards. Yeah, we can coin bonus. Yep, another Gold Dango. And I don't want to give them any more multi price targets than I have to. Okay, Scissor's good. Scissor's good. And yeah, I'll hold on to the other two. Yeah, sure, let's bench the fourth Gimme Ghoul. And we will go and swing for 100 here. 50. Yeah, it's 50 per. Okay, what are those two cards? If those two cards are good, we are in trouble. 
If they're not, then we should be okay. And this only has 150 HP. Like in a worst case, yeah, this is going to do like 180 max. <sighs> okay, Defiance Band, Evo Press. This is doing 50 damage. This could max out at like 280 behind on prizes. That, that does kind of suck. Okay, they brick on the... Ooh, that sucks. That sucks. I wonder if they only have... Yeah, they need to find their reversal energy right now or they are in big trouble. Otherwise, we're we're just kind of flowing here, enjoying the vibes. Path to the Peak does it does kind of hurt. I didn't realize they were going to play Path. Um that's kind of okay right now. It's kind of okay. Oh, what are they going to boss up? Probably The scissors annoying. The scissors annoying. Um, we are still going to one-shot it, though. In a way, that's actually better for us. Yeah, this is actually kind of better for us. Let's go and battle VIP pass. And I will thin our deck even more. Do we bump path? I kind of don't want to. At least not right now. Like, it doesn't... It doesn't help us, per se. Yeah, let's hold on to our hand. I will punishing scissors for 160. <laughs> For, now they have to... They're, they're probably going to take a single prizer at best at this point. We get some energy. This is this is flowing really nice for us. Where we could get in trouble is if they get the Toad Scroll back out and we can't recover all our energy in time, then we would just be dead. So that's something we have to look out for here, right? They could, I think they got rid of Thornton. How many Thorntons do they run is really the million dollar question. If they have the energy, they will knock us out. They'll do what? No, 150. Yeah, they'll knock us out. Interesting. I don't know why they would have put it there. I would have put it on the grottle. I guess that's probably all they had and they had to do it. It does suck. It does it is a waste of of energy here. Okay. So we're going to need four energy to knock out this Torterra, which thankfully, yeah, there's there's seven and oh man, we have all our energy retrievals here. Um let's go and get rid of Do we get rid of path? No, I don't want to get rid of path right now. Um, I think we can get rid of Ultra Ball and Counter Catcher. Like, we're way ahead at this point. Okay, we're going to have to get rid of four. Um, uh, I'm going to attach one to this Gold Dingo. And I, I don't want to bump path right now. And I don't want to evolve the other. Is it worth... At this point, it doesn't matter, right? I might as well just go... No. I don't want to give them a multi-prizer. Here, let's just go and swing for... Uh, actually, we'll super rod back in the the scissor line. And they've got three energy here. Uh, we are going to get rid of an energy or discard one right now. So, yeah, let's actually throw those back in. And... Mm, if we artisan, we can get the scissor back out. Yeah, actually, let's do that. And that just gives us a little more to work with going forward. And now I should have kept the Ultra Ball. Uh, and we can coin bonus. Yeah, let's draw some more cards. Okay, and we get a Colrus. Thin our deck even more. That's actually kind of nice. And we get the Scissor on the following turn. And we can draw. Let's go and get Vacuum, Energy, and Colrus. We're not going to need the Jirachi. Uh, if they play Path of the Peak, then the yeah the the other thing would have helped. Let's just go and swing, and we'll get rid of four here. One, two, three, four. Ah, it's a single prize deck. I forgot about that whole bit. 
Yeah, if they turn this into a a Thornton into the the Toad School, Toad School, that I'm horrified for. Though we might be pushing this game like out of reach at this point. Let's go and see. Oh, Super Rod. All right. If they, if they try and get the Toad School or the Toad School in there, uh, we might just have to bail and get all our energy back, and then just finish the game that way. Let's see what they put in. Yeah, they're gonna get the. They're gonna go for the Toad School play again. At which point, uh, we're gonna want to just grab all our energy back and at least have it in our hand for the potential end game here. So we can finish strong. Yep, here comes Path to the Peak. Uh, that should be fine. That should be fine. We have most of our resources in hand already. And we have access to most of our energy. Seven, eight... Yeah, we can Earthen Vessel, grab some energy. Yeah, if we get like Iono down to one or something, that would be crazy. Uh, of course, not out of the realm of possibility. We have five cards in the deck, Colorus, one superior energy retrieval. So that's all the energy is accounted for here, right? Um, we'll go get the scissors. We will go get the, the gimme ghoul. We're going all in. We're going all in at this point. Um, let's go energy retrieval. We're going to grab all the energy out of the deck so that they cannot... Um, they cannot punish us in that way. Now, I actually kind of want the Iono. Let's hold on to that. Here we go. We grab all the energy, right? If they want to... 450. Uh, hold on. No. Let's go and attach an energy here. And we just have to discard two. And that should be game. Whatever they want to do. All our energies in hand. I don't need superior energy retrievals anymore. Um, if they go in with the Toad Scroll, that's fine. 150, the Grottle. Um, if they get the other one. Ooh, Luxurious Cape. Interesting. That's going to bring this up to, like, almost 300 HP. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, 290 HP. So the scissor is not going to help us at this point. Um, let's see. Can we get through this? This is a really interesting matchup now. Uh, it could. It could. Right? Uh, that could be an endgame attack. Like, if we burn through a whole bunch of our energy. Right now, we can still one-shot. Yeah, that Toad Scroll is so annoying. Hopefully, we don't get Ionoed here into Oblivion. Okay, they brick on the... Oh, surprise! We got Ionoed. Okay. Okay, we get the Colrus, and that's something. Hmm. Uh-oh, and the Countercatcher. And yeah, bring up the other Goldengo that can't attack right now. Uh, that sucks. Are they going to make a massive comeback here? I think we still have game. Like, there is so much for them to have to dig through in order to make this work. Okay. Okay, let's go and Colrus, and we will grab Super Rod, Energy, and Superior Energy Retrieval. Uh, the Superior Energy Retrieval is not going to get anything back for us, I don't think. Right, cards, discard pile, can't be put into hand by effect of your opponent's abilities or trainer cards. So yeah, Superior Energy Retrieval is not going to work here. 
Um, so let's just go and throw this energy back in. Yeah, just those. Um, and we'll wait. And we'll wait. They could also try and deck us out. <laughs> this is a... Messy match for sure. It does help that we got all of the energy out, right? Um, almost all of these cards are energy going forward. Yeah, they can play some reversal and they're going to hit pretty hard. Oh, and we get Ionode, which is... Um, it's annoying. It's annoying for sure. And the path is annoying. They're down to two cards. <laughs> Okay, they can throw some stuff back in. But yeah, our entire deck is energy right now. And we are going to swing for at least 150 here. And at a certain point, how many Ionos do you think they run? They've used two. Do they have more than that? This is a weird match. Weird, weird match. Okay, if they turn that into Grotal, uh, then this is doing 250, yeah. Although, yeah, if it turns back into the Torterra, then it's only going to be 150. Um, yeah, that does kind of suck. It does kind of suck. We need... Yeah, we just wait. One, two, we have 12 energy in the deck. Three, four, five. So half of our energy is here. Okay, they're going to Evo press. We're still doing 200 damage with the scissor, right? Um, at which point we should have them in checkmate. Yeah, we'll swing for 210. Yeah, this Torterra deck is really interesting. And that was really annoying, that Toad Squirrel. I'm glad we took it out when we did. Uh, if they Iono us again, it's almost all energy at this point. Now, there is... Is there a world where, yeah, maybe they they Professor Turo scenario... Um, oh, yeah, it's only one energy. Damn. Or what's it called? We're only getting one card. If the next card is a energy, then then we take the win. Yeah, 270, huge. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. If this next card isn't an energy, we lose. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> thank good our opponent played that really well. Oh man, we almost lost to that super annoying Torterra deck. And yeah, the, the gorgeous mantle, the luxurious cape coming in incredibly clutch for them, being able to tank out multiple turns, uh, us getting a little greedy in our setup, benching multiple Goldengos and drawing through a whole bunch of cards. Uh, getting rid of the artisans was probably a problem in terms of us drawing our cards. I think the end, what we ended up doing to save us in that match was that we saw that the Toad Scroll was coming back in and we put all of our energy back into the deck so that we would not be reliant on our recovery cards at that point. So yeah, the two big plays that we made were taking out the Toad School early and then taking out the then taking all of our energy, putting it back in the deck. And even though they had some really good plans of countering our offense from Path to the Peak, the reversal energies. And yeah, the the Io they had a crazy amount of Ionos and Iona us down to one. We had thinned our deck to the point where um, it was basically all energies and we, we gave ourselves just enough of wiggle room, just enough leeway to eke out the win there. GG's, let's go get the Goldengo out or Gimme Ghoul. And our hand kind of sucks at the moment, TBH.
damn, I, I kind of wish we had been able to play out that Giratina match because I thought that was, it was interesting until it, well, okay, Gardevoir. All right. Um, we actually have to play Manaphy in this matchup now. In the new era, I think we have to get rid of boss. In the new era of Gardevoir, you absolutely have to play Manaphy and watch out for the Screamtail. Let's go discard some energy. They are not going to attack us on turn one, which is a little bit of a saving grace here. And we'll wait. Definitely going to want the scissor in this match. The scissor, single prize attacker, it's going to one shot most of their deck. We love that for us. I'm going to Iono because I'm pretty sure we're going to have some energy to work with on turn two off of the Iono. And yeah, we're going to set up, we need to set up a little bit more of a board here. Interesting. They don't get any Ralts down off the VIP. They must have a plan for that, right? You got to have a plan for that. Yep, there's a Ralts. And a second one. Yeah, you're fine. They are fine. Fog Crystal, probably throw down a third one. Oh, no, just get some energy. Okay. Sure. I, I, yeah, get the Mew out. Yeah, that's smart. That's smart. It does suck that we can't even one shot this, or we can't, we have to burn multiple energies to take out this Mew as Gold Dingo. Which is obnoxious, but it is what it is. Now, there's also an argument to be made that if they're going to whittle their hand down to two, do we? Now, they're weak to metal. That's actually something worth noting here. If we don't Iono, how good are these two cards, right? Because we could just knock them out, potentially, and, and just leave it at that, force them to work with whatever those two cards are. But I also don't like our current hand of cards at this point in time. Let's go and coin... Let's get rid of these two. Um... I kind of don't like our hand at the moment. Let's go and Iono. I could have Ultra Balled some stuff. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, that was a horrible Iono. That was a horrible Iono. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Um, we're going to need to find two energy off this scissor or off this coin bonus or like we we just wasted the turn holy cow okay two yes <laughs> okay um yeah we'll take that one two that was almost almost an complete disaster almost a complete disaster now, we arguably could also bench a Cresselia here, or bench a... Bench the Jirachi to stop the the Cresselia play. But then we only have... Our bench ends up being pretty thin. We still have... Our hand is not great. Colrus can bail us out, potentially. But... This is kind of rough. The Zacian could save us here in the sense that Zacian is weak to metal and we only need three energy in hand to knock this out. And right now, if they get the Curlias going... Yeah, we need three energy to knock out this Greninja. Oh, that's really annoying. Okay. Oh, and we get Iono, so it doesn't even matter. I'll take five new cards, though. Gladly. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And we have an energy retrieval and a superior energy retrieval. So, um, this is good. This is good.
in this match in particular, I think two scissor would be amazing to finish some stuff off right now. Because like right now, oh yeah, scissor, Scyther can also trade really well on the Zacian. Yeah, right now Scissor is doing two, 100, 200 damage before weakness. And this could do upwards of 300 on Gardevoir EX. So really something, something to keep in mind. They're playing Roar of the Sword. I don't like bench. I don't believe in like approaching it this way at all. I know like you're, it's tough, but like I would not bench the Zacian until you have the KO locked in IMO. Okay, let's go and I'm actually going to conceal cards here. We have energy recovery if we need it. Um, How scared are we of a Cresselia play? right now maybe a little bit maybe a little bit um it does limit our bench though a lot we have three attackers still okay let's go and draw arguably we could have played earthen vessel thin the deck yeah arguably should have done that um we're gonna do 100 here let's go and earthen vessel for two and thin the deck out we are our last two energy in the deck. Holy cow, there's 24 energies and none in the... Okay, let's go and... I'll attach an energy to a gold dango and then we'll swing for three. Then we don't... Ah, I should have attached it to the Scyther, actually. Then we don't have to worry. But we'll take it. We'll take the KO. Okay. Okay, if they're going to go in with the Zacian, I'm feeling pretty good as long as we don't get Ionode here. Our hand is pretty great. They're going to play the Collapsed. That's fine. Uh, we'll get rid of the Jirachi. And the, they, now they can't Cresselia play anyway. That's fine. Screamtail is not going to be... Screamtail is just going to hit the active and that's it. Oh, Okay. Sure. That's actually kind of annoying. Now they set themselves up for the Cresselia. No, okay, they bench lock themselves. They are not going for the Cresselia play. <laughs> sure. Um, please tell me that the the scissor is in the deck. I should have checked before right now cuz if we have to go in with the Goldengo, uh it's going to be a little messier. Do they have the Gardevoir EX? Yeah, they do. Okay. And they probably have a bunch of energy in the discard pile. Yeah, they're going to take this one shot on the Goldengo, which is fine. I guess worst case scenario, if the Scissor is in the deck, we can retreat Scyther. No problem. Uh, it's just a little bit of a waste there. It is kind of annoying though. And yeah, the the maximum amount of damage we can do on the Gardevoir is 300, which is obnoxious, but not necessarily the end of the world. Oh, what? Why are they powering this one up? Oh, they probably want to go in with the other Gardevoir instead. Yeah, that's fine. That's actually really good for them. And then, yeah, it makes it a single prize trade again. That's annoying. For sure. Yeah, because they're going to take a one shot on this Goldengo up trade. Okay, keep digging. Keep digging. Yep, thin the deck. Grab that Jirachi.
Yeah, 270. Huge. Okay. Okay. That was a good play on their part. Good sequence of events. Uh, at least we can evenly trade right now. And we do get the Gimme Ghoul, so we don't have to burn any resources on that. Let's go and coin bonus, and we'll draw a card. Uh, we can get rid of Battle VIP Pass and Nest Ball here. And we can grab the Scissor. That's pretty great. And we can just Energy Retrieval for free, or at least without having to burn any extra resources. And... Um, I guess I could... Yeah, let's go ahead and conceal cards here. Get ourselves a little more stuff to work with. I'm going to save... I'm going to save the Super Rod for the next turn because I want to get the Scissor back. Boom. 420. We take that. Now, if they get, like, a Gust play, which they very well could, it could be a problem. But let's see how they play it. They might just go... Yeah, if we're going to continue single prize racing, then... Yeah, I'm not quite sure where this nets out. The messiest thing is that we can't one-shot the Gardevoir EX. Where it, our best case scenario is like a bit short. Okay, we really don't want to give them Artisan. They've only got six cards left. They haven't played a Cresselia yet. They've got, yeah, all of their Ralts accounted for. So yeah, this entire line is just gone. They've only got four cards left, but they're still incredibly dangerous. There has to be a boss in there or a counter catcher. Definitely counter catchers in here. So we have to assume, I would assume like this Goldengo's dead. But let's see. Right now, if this stays in the active, we are doing 210 damage based on the current state of the game. And that's that we hit this for weakness as well. So Okay, they're going to super rod some stuff back as they should. Let's try and see what they super rod. Oh, they don't have to sh Okay, yeah, they sh Okay, yeah, they get the guard of war back. Yep. Probably bench a... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, are they just going to attack with the Screamtail? Or... I, they don't have to. Yeah, they're probably just going to do the Screamtail and knock out the Scissor. No, they're... Okay, they're setting up to attack with uh, this Gardevoir. I want... They have to have the Gust, right? They have to have the Gust. Otherwise, why would you... This is continuous. Each... This 20 damage for each heads. Like, arguably, I could leave it to a coin flip and put ourselves with a single prize attacker. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I could attack with the Gimme Ghoul. How chaotic are we feeling? The fact that it's flip until you get tails kind of freaks me out. I kind of hope they just hit the scissor as a counter catcher. Yeah. Okay. So if this is our predicament, right? We, I think the only way we win, we still have to attack the Zacian. We have to attack the Zacian. Um, let's go and do we bench anything like use artisan to thin okay let's go and get rid of that energy we get a superior energy retrieval that's nice we still need like gold dingo this is a little weird 
Um, because we don't have. Okay, I'm gonna bench the Mew. And let's go and artisan some stuff back. Okay, I could actually be making my odds worse here, but um Let's get the Gimme Ghoul out. I probably didn't need to bench that. Um, and if we play the Superior Energy Retrieval right now, I don't think that changes anything. Hmm. Yeah, let's just go and hit with the Punishing Scissors. I need a Gust. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, oh, I should have attached energy. I should have attached energy to get to the Mew so we could grab a thing. Oh, I've made this much worse. I've made this much worse. Is Countercatcher still in the deck? Possibly. I think we may have screwed ourselves. Um, yeah, this is not good. This is not. And we got we I got Iono down to two. Um, we get gold dingoes. We get gold dingoes. That's good. That's good. We may want to brick on Artisan just to give ourselves a better chance of drawing into the cards we need. Um, yeah, is it worth bricking on Artisan? That is the question. Hmm. We can still win. It's just a matter of can we gust up this Zacian? and get enough energy on the same turn in order to do the thing. Now, Screamtail's not... Yeah, at most, they're going to hit. Yeah, they can't bench snipe us right now. Oof. This is... This feels bad. This feels really bad. Oh, this is going to come down to the wire. Interesting. Yep. Yep. 160. Okay. Yeah, we have to knock this out. And I'm not sure we're going to get it. But we can try. We can try. Uh, we do get the counter catcher. That's good. Are we going to get enough? Let's brick on the artisan. Actually, you know what? We'll use the artisan. We might as well thin the deck and give ourselves a better shot at grabbing the pieces we need. Lost Vacuum, Ultra Ball. Uh, no, that's not going to do it. I'm going to need more than that. Coin bonus. We get the Superior Energy Retrieval. Uh, I think we got him. I think we got him. Let's go. Uh, one, two, three, four. Um, we can attach. And then we counter catcher up the Zacian and we swing for 300 damage. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we get the win. G. Geez, that was a great match. That was a great match coming all the way down to the wire. Um, we, 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 our opponent played that really well. And they, we pretty much only had one win condition was the Zacian. And like, I argue that they should not have benched that Zacian at all until they were ready to attack with it. Yes, Roar of the Sword is nice to attach an extra energy here and there, but its value almost entirely comes from when you bench it and take a multi-prize KO a two prizer, potentially a three prizer, but benching it as early as they did left it as a two prize liability 
And considering all the things that played out there, lots of things happened, lots of ups and downs, and they made a lot of really great plays as well. But the play that will come back to haunt them is benching that Zashian early, leaving us a target that we could hit to win the game. GG's. And there we go. That is a look at Goldengo E. X. And again, I think this card still has a lot of potential. I don't know if I personally have cracked the perfect deck list. I probably not. There's still a lot of different takes on this deck and a lot of people trying to crack the code on getting the optimal Goldingo list. At the very least, I think it is a solid rogue tier deck to two tier three. And I think that the C this still has room to grow. I think that there probably will be a point in history where Gold Dango is a, a, I think it can crack at least the fringe of the meta, if not be a meta relevant deck. If it's not today, at some point, I feel like there is enough good stuff here for Gold Dango for it to be uh, pretty awesome someday. But what say you? Do you, do you believe in Gold Dango? Do you think that there's a, another list that someone else is playing or that you're playing that's better? Um, do you think that Gold Dango just kind of sucks and is going to need some more cards in the future? Let me know in the comments below. But for now, I got to get going. Thank you so much for watching. Before we go, you can find me on all the things, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at in third person. You can find me on Twitch at in third person where I stream the Pokemon trading card game every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern time and check out the website in thirdperson.com for more articles and videos on video games, board games, and other nerdy pursuits. Twitch fam, stick around. Uh, but for everybody on YouTube, we're going to go and see you later. Bye-bye.